let's get started on our mats and let's get started lying down. And we'll all begin in Supta Baddha Konasana. So soles of the feet together, knees wide. And today we'll be all about kind of tapping into self as we start this new month, new day of the, of the month. Take one hand on the belly and one hand on the heart. Let your eyes soften. And just feel what's happening beneath the hands. So the belly and the chest rise and fall with the breath. And that hand over the heart, you may be able to feel your heartbeat. So giving yourself a couple more breaths, a couple more moments to really feel those things happening, that connection to your body. And these things in your body that, that happen without you controlling them. Now we'll turn the attention to the breath. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Open the mouth. Big exhale. Again, inhale. Exhale. One more time. The longest one yet. Big inhale. Letting go of stale air and maybe other things. Then settling into the breath that you want for practice. You can keep your hands where they are or let them open out to the sides with the palms up, ready to receive. And now that your breath is coming into that steady state, Bring your awareness to your mind and just notice if the mind's really chattery this morning or if the mind is pretty still or if it's somewhere in between those two. And then finding your intention for the day, for the practice. Maybe it's just letting things happen, right? Kind of going with the flow, literally and physically today. But not feeling like you need to control every bit and every piece. It's similar to the breath and the heartbeat. There are a lot of things that happen without us controlling them, without us kind of hovering over to make sure they happen. So I think if we can just let our practice happen this morning. Maybe let, let the day happen without attachment to the result. Whenever you're ready to take your hands on the outsides of your thighs and close your legs like a book. And then bring your knees into your chest and just gently find some rocks on the back. And we'll start with a really simple twist. We'll take the arms out wide in um, goal post or in yoga, we call this practice arms a lot. Drop the hips to the right and we'll start with the knees going to the left. So today we'll be doing some of our movement beginning with the left because, well, really just because, because we often start with the right. We always start with the right. I'm just changing things up. Take a big inhale. Maybe look over that right shoulder. Take a big exhale. Can you make your knees heavier to the left? One more inhale. And then exhale, come onto your back and just switch sides. Hips to the right, knees to the left. Your arms are still in those goal posts, those cactus arms. And this time I want you to imagine on the inhales that your ribs are going more to the left. And on the exhales, your knees are going more to the right. So we have that oppositional action from the trunk to the legs. One more inhale. And then exhale, come on to your back. Go ahead and grab that strap or whatever you're using as your strap. Left leg today, let's keep the left leg bent, foot planted, pushing the right foot into the strap. Take an inhale here, relax your head and shoulders even more. 
And then exhale, slide your hands lower down the strap and bring your legs kind of at an angle forward so that your knees are essentially in one line. And we'll do that two more times. Inhale, pull the leg towards you. You might want to roll up the strap. And then exhale, take the leg back to that angle. One more time, inhale, leg towards you. And exhale, leg away from you. And then bringing that leg back overhead, grabbing the strap in the right hand, open the leg to the right. And like I mentioned before we started, feel free to use your wall, your furniture, like props. Take a big breath in, big breath out. One more inhale here. And then exhale, strap in the left hand, coming in to that IT then stretch. So we're not lifting the hips off the ground. We're turning the toes to the left and then pulling the leg slightly across the body. Maybe starting to drop the toes a little closer to the face as we push the heel up. Really kind of slight change in the shape. And then exhale, bring yourself back to center. Full feet in the straps. Take a moment and legs up the wall. Think about pushing the belly button down, pushing the low back down, anchoring the hips. Heels high, again, think toes towards you. And then we'll go ahead and strap the left foot, right foot on the mat. Inhale, pull the leg towards you. Find that hip flexion really deep. And then exhale, hands can slide down the strap. Your knees are in the same horizontal line. Two more, inhale, leg towards you. Exhale, leg away from you. Last time, inhale. And exhale. Inhale, bring that leg back to center. Left hand on both sides of the strap. Inhale, open the leg to the left. Again, finding that abduction, moving away from the center line of the body. We spend so much time kind of just at the center line. So getting that, that movement away from center is always nice. And then exhale, come back to center, strap in the right hand. Turn the toes slightly to the right, pull the legs slightly across the body, really anchoring go through that left butt cheek. Again, that slight adjustment, heel goes up more, toes come down more. You can really activate the flex in the foot. And then come back to center. Both feet in the strap, legs up the wall. Again, we're not pulling the legs towards us for this, um, this version. We're not taking the legs away from being vertical. We're really just trying to find vertical, starting to knit the ribs in and pull the belly down. On an inhale, lift your head and shoulders, the little sneaky crunch. And then on the exhale, take it down. And if this hurts your neck, one hand on the strap, one hand behind the head. Going really, really slowly. Lifting up, curling. How high can your shoulder blades come off the mat and then take it down? Collarbone is broad. There's space between your chin and your chest. There's no chin lock here. One more time. Lifting the shoulders and head up. And taking the head and shoulders down. Release that strap. Roll off to one side and then make your way into down dog. And now is the time, if you want to, to click on that playlist link and press play. I really love that first um, Father John Misty song. It kind of always puts me in a, in a good mood. I think it's a really nice way to start the day. So let's start to pedal out through those knees one at a time. Remembering that you can get a really lovely stretch in the back of the legs. I always feel this more in my calves and my hamstrings. But the leg that's straight. Take one more pass through of the right leg and the left leg. And then coming into stillness, widen those feet. Take them to the edges of the mat, toes point forward. And walk your hands back until your heels find the mat. So you're still in down dog. It's just a wider version with the legs and it's a shorter version from hands to feet. Take a big inhale here. And then exhale, left hand to the middle of the mat, right hand slides through to the outside of the left leg and you can go up to the thigh if you want if that's easier to grab you can grab the calf or the ankle and one thing here that can happen is that the hips can really go off kilter 
We want to stay anchored in the lower body. So similar to the twist on our backs, this is another twist. Upper body is doing the twisting, but the lower body is anchoring. Big breath in. Exhale, come back to center. Take a moment, reset, drive your heels down, but lift your hips up. And then right hand to the middle of the mat, left hand threads under. Again, you don't have to grab your ankle. You can grab anywhere on the outside of the leg. You're counterbalancing the twist in the torso with really rooting through the left foot. One more breath. And then come on back to center. Walk your hands back to your feet. Turn your toes out, maybe wider, widen your feet, even past the mat, and drop your hips for your molasses squat. So remembering with this squat, like a lot of shapes in yoga, it looks different on everybody. Your molasses might be here, and that's fine. Some people might turn their toes more forward. But the point of this pose is that our heels are flat, and our hips are as much as we can under the shoulders. And once we get here, little shifts side to side, if you feel comfortable bouncing up and down, that's not going to hurt your hips or your knees, go for it. And then on the next inhale, hands down, parallel your feet, lift the hips high, find that forward fold. Exhale, heels and toes out, drop down to the last minute. Two more times. So just warming up through those hips, getting some mobility this morning, and then moving from parallel to turn out. The next time you come to Malasana, pause here. Really pull the thumbs into the sternum. Really lift up through the crown of the head. Like there's a big ribbon that runs from the base of your spine all the way up to the crown of your head. And then from here, push into your feet. Stand all the way up. Reach up, look up, baby back bend. Arms are wide. And then heel toe the feet together. So we're at the back of the mat. We're facing the front of the mat. Hands to prayer. Samasthiti. Early chair pose, sit low, feet are parallel, tap the fingers to the ground, and then lift your arms just to chest height. So it's a modified arm variation of our chair. Weight back in the heels. You might even want to lift your toes and just experiment with that. Sit the hips lower. Keep the right arm forward, open the left arm back. We're doing a decent amount of twists today. Come into center. Same thing, other side, left arm forward, right arm back. Coming into center, hands to prayer. Bring the legs together, ankles together, knees together, inner thighs. Think about the belly supporting the spine. Tuck the tail a little bit if you need to, and then lift the heels. Stay for three breaths. So remembering again, it's not the outcome that we're attaching to or searching for. It's the experience, the journey the practice, if you will. All right, lower the heels, standing back, but this time cactus the arms, bend the elbows out to the sides. Exhale, fold over the legs. You can widen the feet a little bit if you need to. Inhale, half lift, hands on the shins, pull the shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, fold. Just one more, inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold, bend the knees, walk it out to plank. And we'll do a little bit of core work. So we're going to pepper in um, core work between our flows today. Pull the belly in, spread the fingers, push the hands down so the shoulders feel really active, the arms feel really engaged. And then same thing with your legs. The more you lift your thighs up and push your heels back, the more those legs feel a part of the pose. Inhale, shift the body weight forward, little saw. Exhale, shoulders over wrists. Inhale forward. Exhale back. And again, you're sinking strong body. From the crown of the head to the heel. Neck is long, so you're looking past the top of your mat. Two more. One more. Come forward again, lower the knees. We'll come down today, chest and chin. So bend the elbows through chaturanga. Your butt is lifted in the air and your back is arched. So your chin actually touches the mat. Your hips are high, your elbows are squeezing in. Take a breath in. And then slide through, slide your forearms forward. Remember the arms are at 11 o'clock. Push the hips down, pull the heart through the arm. And then exhale, forehead to the mat. Press back to child's pose, knees wide, inhale. Exhale, weight forward, down dog. Once again, pedal up those knees, walk that dog. 
and then coming into stillness. This time, widen those feet, doing something a little bit different. Walk the hands back, again, until your heels flatten, that's all you need. Taking a little balance challenge. Really make sure that your um, right foot and left hand feel anchored into the floor. We'll be lifting the right hand up, and it just needs to lift a few inches off the ground. I have my palm turned towards the screen. And then left foot, same thing, just a little bit off the ground. Take a breath in, breath out, come back down. Same thing, other side. So knowing where we're going, really preparing yourself. Left hand and right foot are coming off. Anchor left foot and right hand, left hand, right foot. Pressing down into those other hands and feet. Take one more breath. And then bring everything down. Walk your hands on back. Inhale, half lift. We'll skip our malasana. Exhale, fold. Long back. Reach your arms forward today. And then up. Hands come to prayer. Sana Sitihi. Chair pose. Fingers to the ground. This time, lift your arms back. So finding those airplane arms. We'll turn the palms to face each other today. A lot of times we do this with the palms facing the ground. Today they face each other. Imagine that there's somebody that's pulling your middle finger away from you. So you feel your triceps turn on even though you don't have any weight in your hands. Inhale, lift your heels. Feet are wider. So maybe the sound feels a little more stable. Two more breaths. Lower your heels. Hands to prayer. Coming into our chair twist. Sit low. We'll twist to the right first. Left elbow down. Maybe it's outside of the thigh. Maybe that's just hovering above the thigh. Really peeking at the knees, making sure that left knee isn't pushing forward. And then beginning to lift the right elbow higher and higher. Breath in. Same thing, other side. Again, just monitoring the knees. The knees indicate how square the hips are, and we want them to be fairly square. Left elbow up to the ceiling, breath in, exhale, come back, cactus the arms, lift the chest, back bend, exhale, fold over again. You can widen your feet if you want. One time, inhale, half lift, exhale, walk it out to plank. Once again, some core work. This time, we'll take it to leg lifts. Right foot will come off the ground. You can flex the foot or point. Breath in. Breath in. Breath out. One more round. Breath in. Breath out. Three-legged dog. Lift that right leg up. Keep the hips square. And then exhale. Step the right foot forward between the hands. Lower the left knee. Grab your strap. Strap. Between the hands, remember it can be folded in half. I like to fold it in fourths. Hands come behind the back. The wider your hands are apart, the easier this is on your shoulders. So take care. It is Friday morning. You need to kind of go as deep as you possibly can necessarily. Inhale, pull the left hip back over the left knee. So we're pulling back out of the lunge and then drop into the lunge. Anything with the upper body just yet. Now activate the strap. Lift the sternum up to the ceiling. You can tip the head back. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale, pull the belly in. Pull back to that. Half splits with the hands behind the back. So this requires some balance and care. Lift your right toes off the ground. Think right femur back, left hip forward. And you fold however far you want to. The more you engage your core here, the easier it is to feel like, you know what, maybe I can do this. Maybe I wobble, but I find my equilibrium. One more breath. Bring those toes back to the ground. Drop forward, low lunge, Andre and Asana, one more time. Exhale, hands to the mat, step back to plank. We'll go through that modified vinyasa two more times. Inhale, shift forward. Drop to the knees, bend the elbows, come down, chest and chin, so butt is in the air. Slither through, sphinx pose, arms at 11 o'clock. Push down with the forearms to pull the heart through. Drop the head to the mat. Child's pose. Use your arms. 
Keep the arms straight, rock forward, down dog. And coming to the left side, we'll roll back into that. Again, be intentional about what you do with your foot. Breath in, breath out, breath in, breath out. One more, inhale, push down his hands, lift the left leg, three-legged dog. Should feel really strong and also like a wonderful stretch. Exhale, step through, low lunge. Different arms this time. Holding the strap in front of us. Pull back. So right hip is over right knee. It's more of two 90 degree angles, although your front knee may be like mine. Drop the hips forward into the lunge. Step one. Then lift your arms and your sternum for a back bend that feels accessible to your body. Breath in. Exhale again. Pull the back hip over the back knee. First, then lift the front toes up is you straighten or mostly straighten your left leg. And once again, you'll dive over. You wanna keep the length. So straight, long back. Strap is over the crown of the head. Take a breath in, breath out, breath in, breath out. One more now. Exhale forward with the hips and down with the hips, up with the chest on Janasana. Hands to the mat, back to plank. One more of those modified vinyasas, drop the knees, come down chest and chin. It feels like a variation of chaturanga. Arms forward, 11 o'clock, sphinx pose. Forehead down, child's pose, push back. Arms stay straight, hips lift, down dog. All right, taking a moment, about four breaths, for you to do anything that you need to do. For me, it's to hydrate. But for you, it might be to stand down dog, to do a different pose, to rest. And these pauses, are always a great time to return to the intention. And whether that was around the idea of kind of letting go of control, letting go of attachment to outcome, and just kind of letting yourself flow through the day, flow through this practice, or whether it was something else, something maybe more specific to what you're experiencing right now. Come back to that idea. All right, yogis, let's get back into it. Different flow, we'll come into kind of our quote unquote normal vinyasa. From down dog, zip the legs together, lift the heels high, bend the knees, look between the thumbs, and either take a couple of pumps of the hips forward or take a couple of pumps and step forward. Inhale, hands on shin, calf lift. Exhale, fold. Long back, long arms, reach up, take those cactus arms, little back bend, hands to prayer, samastiti. Chair pose, you decide what your chair pose arms are, does it matter to me? From here, we'll twist right arm forward, left arm back, like we did before. Returning to whatever arms you want, left arm forward, right arm back. Returning to whatever arms you want, one-legged mountain, left leg will lift first. Right foot stays down, left leg lift. Really strong and long through the right leg. Again, think about your core. Core is really helpful in even the simplest balances like one-legged. Open the left knee out. And just take a moment here. Your hips are even. You're in this kind of foot is not on your inner right leg. Take one more breath here. And to center with the leg hands to prayer, bend the right knee. So that idea of one-legged chair, left leg back. Right leg is bent straight. It's a variation of our warrior three. Think about really pushing out through the left heel, like we did when we had the strap on the foot and we were starting practice. 
Keep the right knee bent, step the left foot back, reach up. Anjay and Asana, or sorry, not Anjay and Asana, high lunge, crescent lunge, but with a back bend. Bend the elbows wide, lift the heart. Think about pulling the shoulder blades together almost as a support. One more breath. Air pull the arms, diagonal the torso, power lunge. Once again, we'll turn the palms to face each other. Middle fingers reaching away from us, triceps turning on. Take one more breath here. And then just windmill the left arm back, drop the left heel, right arm forward, warrior two. Inhale, straighten the right leg, reach up. This should feel like a release. And then exhale back to that strength that is warrior two. One more time, inhale, push down, lift up in the arm. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, flip the right palm, reach up and back, reverse your warrior. Let's all kick that left hand down the left leg for a moment. Swim that right arm overhead. Keep bending the right knee. And notice if the right knee feels like it's collapsing or out. And imagine that you're vacuuming the muscles around the thigh, on the thigh bone, supporting the knee. One more breath. And then side angle. Right arm could rest on the leg or go lower down. Chest is still forward. Now the length focus is more in the left side of the body, the top side of the body. One more breath here. And then lift yourself all the way up. Keep these right toes turned where they are. Turn the left toes out, skandasana, sinking the hips down, keeping the right leg straight. Like that malasana squat, that first squat we did, this shape might look like mine. It might look like a back heel up, or it might look like a higher hip. We're all turned out though, so we're wrapping those inner thighs up and back. Both of our knees are facing the ceiling, and our toes are turned to the side. Take one more breath here. And then wherever you are, open twist. Left arm is down. It could touch the floor, perhaps. Right arm is up. We're leveraging the arm and the leg to open the top arm. One more breath here. And then hands come down. Prasarita Padottanasana, that wide-legged forward fold. So turn the toes parallel. Folding. Kiss down. Take a couple of bends in the knees. You can think about this as kind of like a forward fold little squat pulse. And then you have three breaths. And if you want to keep moving the legs, cool. If you want to take the arms to a different place, sometimes early morning practice, that down dog variation of our wide-legged forward fold feels really nice for the back. You can do anything that incorporates this forward fold shape in the lower body. Wherever you are, come back to your hands being under your shoulders and if you do have blocks at home or you have something that you want to elevate your hands with go for it particularly if the floor is far for you start to wiggle the feet in until they're slightly wider than the hips so i'll stop myself here we're going to take the weight into the back foot left foot start to crawl your hands so they're in front of the left foot Come to the inside, the big toe side of the right foot, and push that right leg directly out. So taking our abduction here, but with internal rotation. So it feels maybe we don't often lift our leg like this. Take one more breath, and then bring that foot down. Wiggle yourself to the front of the mat. Left hand down, right arm up, easy twist. And then keep open out to side plank stack the right. drop the left knee right foot down deep breath in deep breath out next inhale right arm over the knee. get a bigger side body stretch and then exhale both hands to the mat your usual vinyasa so that inhale forward exhale chaturanga knees or toes inhale cobra or up dog unless you really want to sink again and then exhale, down dog. Let it go, breath out. Zip the legs together. Once again, lift the heels. Some pumps with the hips and the knees. And this time, if you want to start taking some donkey kick hops, you're not going to wake up anybody, go for it. 
And then you're stepping or hopping to the top of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Long back, long arm. You get to the top, elbows to 90, chest to the ceiling, hands to prayer. Samastitihi. Okay. Again, any arms you want. It doesn't have to be like a specific yoga shape. Left arm forward, right arm back. Return to center. Right arm forward, left arm back. Return to center. One-legged mountain, right leg lift. Again, starting off simply and building on with our balance. So giving yourself that confidence boost that you have this. You're pushing down in your left foot. You're lengthening up through your left leg. Right leg is bent. And just open the right knee out to the side. Let that right foot dangle and hang. It could flex or point. We're just working that external rotation. Take one more breath here. And then bring the right knee back to center, hands to prayer, left knee bend. So get that one-legged chair going. Then push the right foot back. It is a slow and steady transition until the right leg is completely extended back. Breath in, breath out, breath in. High lunge, right foot steps back as far as you can, reaching up. Bend the elbows wide, lift the heart. Again, think about supporting the heart with the shoulder blades. Head forward, arms back, palms face in. Variation of power lunge. Keep that right back thigh lifting up, up, up. And then windmill the right arm back. Drop the right heel. Bend the left knee, big warrior two. Inhale, straighten the left leg, look up. Exhale, press, warrior two. Again, inhale, lift it up. Exhale, warrior two. Think about that front knee, really supporting it with the muscles again around the thigh. This leg doesn't move, the back leg doesn't move. We just tip the torso towards the back leg. Right hand slides down the right leg, left arm reaches overhead. So feeling that stretch from the right hip all the way to the right arm, or sorry, left. One more breath. And then side angle, our legs haven't moved. Torso is doing the movement. Now the stretch is in the right side of the body. Breathing in, breathing out. Coming up, skandasana. Keep the left toes turned where they are. Right toes turn back, then into the right knee and sink down. And again, just remembering that this might not look like it looks on me and that's fine. As long as you're in a side lunge with turnout, or your left leg is straight and your right leg is bent, there is the shape. Right arm reaches down. Again, it could touch the floor. It doesn't have to. Left arm reaches towards the ceiling and then behind you. So you have this big open twist angle. Take one more breath. And then hands down. Find your wide-legged forward fold. And once again, this can take any variation. I would suggest, since we're doing this again, same amount of breath, something different than you did last time, maybe with the arms. Maybe you can Maybe you notice where the weight is in the feet. Are you putting all of the weight into the heels, or is there some weight in the balls of the feet and the toes? Take one more breath. And then crawling to the front of the mat. Easy twist, right hand down, left arm up. Open out to your version of side plank. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Arm overhead, maybe lift the hips higher. Exhale. And then coming back to plank. And again, your vinyasa, whatever it is that you usually do. And we'll once again, take a pause, about four breaths. Again, whatever your body is craving. And we often use this to rest, but don't feel like you need to rest if your body is feeling energized and that's not really what we you right now. You 
got one more round of breath. Before we go into the next round of flow, a little more core work. We'll meet in plank however you want to get there. We'll lower down to that 11 o'clock, those forearms, those sphinx forearms, but we have the hips off the ground. Inhale, take your hips over to the right, tap the ground or don't, come back to center. To the left or just drop them to the left, come back to center and then keep going, twisting to the right. Coming back to center, belly to the spine, twisting to the left. Coming back to center, two more. <sighs> nice and slow, nice and steady. Last one in each direction. I know you all have this. And then just staying in forearm plank for three breaths. Again, if you feel tension in your low back, I can honestly say that I often do when I'm in planks, little trick is to tuck that tailbone. Again, shortening the space, the hips and the bottom of the ribs can really make a big difference. Last breath. And then lower the hips, untuck the toes, sphinx pose, look over the right shoulder, look over the left shoulder, come back to center, and then bending into the right knee. So it's almost like half frog here but not using the arms, just letting this hamstring curl happen how it happens, and then bringing that leg down, left leg lift. And I'm pointing my feet, but you could flex your feet, bring that foot down. One more each side, bending into the right knee, extend through the right knee, bending into the left knee, extending through the left knee. Forehead to the mat, hands by the ribs, elbows by the ribs, Tuck the toes, lift the kneecap. You know where we're going. Push up to plank, push back to down dog. Next flow, we'll get right into it. Inhale, right leg lift. Exhale, right knee to the chest. Inhale, right leg lift. Exhale, right knee to the left elbow. Inhale, right leg lift. Exhale, step through warrior one. Before you lift your arms, you might wanna take your left foot wider than your right. Spin the left heel down and then lift up your arms. On an inhale, we'll straighten the right leg or come almost straight. And then exhale, bend into the right knee. Again, inhale, straighten through the right leg. Exhale, bend through the right knee. Staying here, airplane the arms, tip the body forward. Again, that airplane will be palms in. Engaging through the belly, take a deep breath in. Lift the left heel, warrior three, push forward. We came into warrior three last time from the front of the mat. Now coming from the back of the mat, take one more breath. And then standing to the top of the mat, reach up, look up. Chair pose, again, any arms you want. Moving to the other side of the body. So left leg is down, right leg is up. Open the right knee to the side, find your actual tree. Last time we did the dangling participle, this time find your tree, inner thigh, inner calf, inner ankle. Hands to prayer to start. Inhale to turn your head to the right. Exhale, center. Inhale, turn your head to the left. Exhale, center. Half moon. We are going to push this right foot back. I would recommend bending the left knee a little bit. The right side of the body is on top of the left. You can keep your left knee bent or straighten it. Keep pushing through that right heel, finding that back of the leg extension. One more breath. Wear your two left leg forward. One time, inhale, straighten the left leg, reach up. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior, stable front knee. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, lift the right heel, square your hips forward, press and lunge. Bend the back knee, bend the arms on J and Asana. Exhale, half split, hands to prayer. We'll take that balance half split again. We did it in the very beginning of class. Different arms this time and just checking in. Full breath in. Full breath. 
stuff out. We will twist this guy. So you'll probably feel more of a stretch in your IT band rather than in your hamstrings as we twist. Right hand can be inside or more challenging outside of the left leg. Left hand spins up. Keep pulling your left femur back. Forward. One more breath. And then drop the right foot, slide the right hand forward, easy twist, we've been here before. Inhale, lift the hips up, lift the arm overhead. And then exhale, pyramid pose, slide your back foot in. Turn your back toes out slightly and folding down. Shake your head yes, shake your head no. Two-footed balance. Keep the body angling down. And for you, if your angle is more of a half lift, that's fine. But think about the spine staying long rather than coming into this really rounded, hunched back. Hands to hips. Push through the feet, lift the hips up. Think left hip back, right hip forward. Take one more breath. And then hands to the mat, both feet back into plank, go through your flow. We started that round on the right leg, ended with the left leg as the forward leg. So we'll invert. Inhale, left leg lift. Exhale, left knee to chest. Inhale, left leg lift. Exhale, left leg, right arm twisted out. Inhale, lift the leg. Exhale, step through, warrior one. Again, I would step the right foot out, maybe an inch or two, drop the right heel, really feel that press reaching up. Forward arms back, palms face each other. Again, find this angle, find the strength in the back leg, and then lift the back heel. Hands to prayer, tips forward into your warrior three. And again, use your furniture as you want. Step to the top of the mat, reach up, look up. Exhale, chair pose, any arms that you want. Inhale, one-legged mountain, left leg lift. Now we're transferring the weight to the right leg. Open the left knee to the left, find your tree. Remember, it's not so much about how high your foot is on your leg. It's really about, are you standing tall in your right leg? Is your weight still centered or are you lilting your hips to the right? You really want to find that centering. Bring the hands to prayer and we'll look over the left shoulder and then over the right shoulder and it may be rocky like it is for me on this side. Coming back to center, half moon, lift the left foot off of the right thigh or calf, bend the right knee and think about pushing the left foot back, back, back. Again, these slower transitions can maybe help us define more of a balance. Any arms you want here, your left side of the body is on top of your right. We're talking vertically. One more breath. Left foot steps back, right foot forward, that big warrior two. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, press down. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, square it up, high crescent lunge. Exhale, bend the elbows, drop the back knee, lift the heart. Hands to prayer, we'll find that half split balance. Folding over that front leg. Breath in, breath out. Breath in. Preparing for our twist, left hand inside or more challenging outside of the right leg. Keep the hips even, right hip, right arm lift. Finding your breath here. Taking the right hand down, bring your body weight forward, pyramid pose, left foot, hands are on the ground. Bringing that stability. So I was talking about the hips. We're bringing those hips to square. We're dropping the body down. And then adding that balance challenge. Again, two feet on the ground as a balance. Sometimes we don't think about it as such, but we definitely feel it with pyramid. Bring the hands to the hips. And notice how working with your feet, the wobbling that happens in the feet, the stability that you need in the balls of the feet, the toes, and the heels. 
And then bring that right hand down, right foot back, left arm up. So we're opening into that easy twist. Lift the hips up, lift the arm up. And then bringing the hands down and going through your vinyasa. One more really short standing flow, and then we'll bring it to the mat. Left leg lift. This time, bend the knee, open the hip. You know I love a good wall. So again, if you have a wall, you can bring that left foot to your wall. If you like to flip the dog, you could flip the dog, or you could just hang out here with your left foot hanging in space. One more breath. And then exhale, step the left foot forward. Drop the right heel, warrior one. We're coming into humble warrior. Strap between your hands, you can. If you feel comfortable making a fist, go for it. Left hip back, right hip forward. Bend the whole chest and push your arms down. Exhale, diving forward. Again, it's a slow transition. See if you can get your left shoulder inside of your left thigh without your left butt cheek pushing out. So think hips stay the same. Upper body is just folding forward. Once we get one more breath. And then lift yourself back up. Inhale, chest lifts. Exhale, back. Heel. Hands are still behind you. Bend your knees, one-legged mountain. Eagle pose, left leg bends, right leg bends on top of left. Maybe today this right foot doesn't touch the groan. Add that balance challenge, or maybe the right foot grabs around the left calf. You sit low. And then if you want an extra challenge, hands are still behind you. You can tip your body forward into a fold. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Two feet to the top of the mat. Standing back. Then as you fold forward, you can let go of the strap or just the fist. And plant your palms. Go through your flow. Just other side. Right side. Lift the leg. Bend the knee. Open the hip. Again, you might flip. You might be at a wall. You might just hang out here. Exhale. Step through where you're one. Once again, we'll take the hands behind the back. And if you made a fist, See if you can bring your other thumb on top. We tend to always put our dominant thumbs on top, so you'll feel that it feels a little less natural if you try, try both ways. One, it will feel less natural. Push the feet down, bend the right knee. Drive the left heel down. So you get this really nice stretch through um, the back calf, actually. Push the hands down, lift the chest, feel that opening. And then everything stays the same. You just take your torso out and forward. So we're trying to bring the body inside of the right leg. You can always right in, widen the right foot if you need to. Head can drop. Big breath in. Big breath out. Lift yourself up. Hands are still where they have been. Back heel lift. Bend the back knee. Pushing from two foot. Left side. Find your eagle. Again, see if you normally don't. Uh, don't have your left foot off the ground. Try it this time. And then maybe also try that tip forward, really squeezing your thighs. Like there's a really thin piece of paper between them. You don't want it to fall. One more breath. Release the left foot, standing back bend. Exhale, ditch the strap on your way down or your hands in a fist. One of our last answers, inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the palms, go through your flow. Keeping with the left leg starting first with the movement. Half pigeon on the left leg or figure four or double pigeon on the left. Bend the knee, open the hip. And then getting into that shape. And you all know your bodies really well. So making sure that you're modifying accordingly. And remembering if you are taking half pigeon, if your weight is all on your left side, you're not getting a stretch in your left. Similarly, if you're Sitting on your left foot, you're not getting the stretch you want. So you really want that left knee out to the left. Right foot can be near, uh, left foot, excuse me, can be near the right groin. 
but we just had that nice widening across the mat. From here, you can come into your relaxed version of the pose, whether that's a fold or laying on your back. Four breaths. You can start to slow down the breath. And just notice what sensations you're feeling, whether they're physical or emotional or both. And then however it makes most sense for you, we'll meet in Janushirshasana with the right leg straight. Take your weight in your left hip if you were in half pigeon. Right leg goes out to the top right of the mat. Left foot snuggles in to the right inner thigh. Turn towards the right leg. This might be where you want your strap as an extension of your arm. Inhale, long spine. Keep this length and just think about someone pressing their hand on your low back. And nothing is changing. All that's happening is that your torso is moving down. So in humble, where you really round the back. In most of our forward folds, we keep the back long, including our head to knee pose, the one we're doing now. Take a breath in. Breath out. Breath in. Breath out. Come out of the pose. Turn over your left shoulder for a really simple twist. Right hand to left knee, left hand behind you, look up and over, and then come to center. If you want a vinyasa to do the other side, great. If you're not feeling it, that's also great. And once you get back to down dog, it's the right leg. It lifts, it bends, it finds that groin stretch. And then you get into whichever of the shapes works best for you, and it might be different on your two sides. And settling in once you get there. And if you've been taking ujjayi breath for all of practice, now might be the time that you start to exhale through the mouth to feel like you're letting go. Now might be the time that you flutter through the lips. You make some really loud, boisterous exhales. Half pigeon, start to walk yourself up. Weight in the right hip, swing your left leg around. Figure four, you can just rock yourself up. We'll all meet with a straight left leg angled at the left top of the mat. Right foot in that tree, strap it up if you want. Inhale to lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Exhale to fold. Again, keeping the sense of a line running down the spine. One more breath. And then lifting yourself up, taking that twist over the right shoulder, breath in, breath out, come back to center, both legs forward. As slow as you can, keep the legs straight, roll down. And so you can start to round the back here. And when you get all the way down, just one back bend. We'll take it to that bridge, feet closer to the body. You really just want your knees over your ankles. So they don't have to, heels don't have to be right at the butt, butt cheeks. You want to actually have some space, but you don't want your feet too far forward. Hands down, arms down. Inhale, peel the spine up. Three breaths. Thinking about wrapping those inner thighs down so your inner knees stay parallel. Exhale, lowering all the way to the mat. Take the feet as wide as the mat. Let the knees support each other and just find a moment to be still. And from here, you can windshield wiper your knees. And if there are any other poses that you would like to do before Shavasana, go for it. And today, if you'd like to take 
legs up the wall. So if you're really near a wall and you want to just slide your butt and your legs up, this is a really nice restorative pose. If you want to take traditional Shavasana or that shape we took at the beginning, feet together, knees wide, you can do that. You might see me sitting up. You should relax down unless you need to go off. And I will bring us out of this final resting pose momentarily. So letting yourself ease in, soften up. Slowly start to bring yourself back into the room that you've been practicing in, back into the body by moving. And those movements, you can just kind of let them happen through the limbs, through the joints. Eventually, take that good morning stretch, which we still are in the earlier hours of the morning. Arms long, legs long, extend the body. And then whenever you're ready to roll to your right side or your Side, coming into that fetal position and this is this is one of those really important poses that sometimes we kind of throw away this is the transition from all of the work you did the poses the breath the intention on the mat back where some might argue the real yoga can happen so what is the intention that you want to take into your Friday into your weekend When you're ready to, you'll come to any comfortable seat and we'll finish with just one round of breath. Hands can rest on the legs or be in prayer, whatever you feel more comfortable with this morning. Gently tipping the chin down in respect to yourself and the other folks practicing with you online. Take a deep breath in. Let it all go. Breath out. The light and teacher in me sees and honors the light and teacher in all of you. Thank you so much for waking up. And